All right, folks, we're diving into the hugging face page of the Fusion X. This cool fine-tuned model used to go by the name Master Model, but don't let the name change fool you. It's still packing some serious heat. So what's the deal with Fusion X? Well, it's basically like the Avengers of AI models. It combines four powerful components into one mega model. Act Video, Movie Gen 1.1, Cosvid, and MPS Reward Laura. Now think of these four as the ultimate squad working together to make your AI videos faster, sharper, and way more dynamic. We've tested each of these components individually in previous videos, so we already know they bring the goods. For example, Act Video and Cosvid, they're like the speed demons of the group, slashing down sampling steps and cutting generation times like it's nobody's business. Oh, and here's the kicker, Cosvid, which we just recently put through its paces, doesn't just stop at speed, it also boosts the coherence of your videos. So if you're using an image as a reference, bam, it helps keep everything looking smooth and on point. And then there's Movie Gen 1.1. Think Hollywood level drama, but without the million dollar budget. And guess what? This is actually a fine tuned version of WAN 2.1, so it's got all the DNA of a top tier model, but with some extra polish. Now, if you scroll down to the left, or maybe the right side of the page, depending on how you roll, you'll see something called the model trees. These show you the family tree of sorts, starting with the base model, WAN 2.1 text to video 14B, and then branching out into the fine-tuned versions. All those fine-tuned models get merged into this one powerhouse you're looking at now, the Fusion X model. There are four quantized versions of this beast, ready to download in the GGUF quantization format. So whether you're running low VRAM, or just want to save some memory juice, these quantized models have got your back. Oh, and heads up, it's not just limited to the text-to-video 14B models either. There's a whole lineup of other models under the Fusion X umbrella, kinda like the expanded universe of WAN 2.1. You've got options for text-to-video, image-to-video, Phantom WAN 14B, and even WAN 2.1 vase. The best part? We're no longer stuck with the old-school 1.3B parameter limit. So as you come to this Hugging Face page, this is the Quant Stack community, where there's a series of models for the WAN 2.1 GUF quantization model, as well as the most recent added models, Fusion X. Here you can see we've got text to video, image to video at the top, Phantom WAN 14B, as well as WAN 2.1 Vase. Now all of this is geared toward the 14B specifically. We're no longer limited to 1.3B because, you know, Using CauseVid and Act Video helps us generate videos faster. We don't have the limitations or the binders of 14B. Even with large parameter sizes, low VRAM can handle generations within a short time. So we're going to try these Fusion X models, especially using the WAN 2.1 VASE combination model type. Take a look at these examples here. If you want to try something, you can use the same prompts for text to video. On the left, you see a normal WAN 2.1 text-to-video result, and on the right, after using the Fusion X text-to-video model, you clearly see two models. The difference is in the face of the character. Because we have MPS, we get way better improvement for human characteristics, objects, and the overall clarity of the face, as well as the whole picture. It refines everything much better in these generations. After we use Fusion X, because it's combined with Movie Gen 1.1, you'll receive more cinematic scenes and dynamic motions, camera motions, in some of your generated results as well. Here, we're seeing example prompts that you can use as templates, the negative prompt. We use a bunch of Chinese text for filtering out low quality and bad video generation types by using negative prompts. And as you can see, we're using Comfy UI. So there are instructions for Comfy UI on this model page. It shows you to download the files in the diffusion model. When you scroll up to the top, Click the Files and Versions tab, and you'll see that all these files are already converted into saved tensor files, which means you can use them in the Diffusion Model subfolder and create them as Diffusion Model nodes here. To load that, just select the drop down menu as we usually do for WAN 2.1 and WAN 2.1 Vase. But I'm not going to use the Diffusion Models folder to download the saved tensor files. Instead, I'm going to use the QuantStack community page that has generated the GGUF quantized models because I found out recently they released a series of WAN 2.1 models in the quantization format. Some of them 
using Q8 to Q6 or Q5 are getting pretty good results as well. So we don't need to spend too much time in memory loading the models unnecessarily. So I'm going to use the WAN 2.114B VASE model for the Fusion X VASE. This combines the WAN 2.1 VASE and the Fusion X model together. As you can see, the model tree clearly shows you what's happening here. These two are combined, merged models, then quantized into this model here. When you click to the Files and Versions, and the GGUF Quantization model page is this one. You have to be aware of the title of the models page where it includes GGUF. Once you're on this page, scroll down to the Files and Versions. Scroll down here, make sure everything is listed in GGUF Quantization, and then you're ready to go. For my graphics card, I'm able to run Q8 and Q6. If my new graphics card, the RTX Pro 6000, arrives in the next couple of weeks, I'll be able to run FP16 models or just go to Quant without GGUF. I'll be able to run the higher requirement models of the safe tensor files, which is FP16, with no problems at all. But that will be later. I'll test it out when my new graphics card arrives. At this moment, with a 4090 graphics card, I'm using Q6 just to make it easier to run with the 14 gigabyte file size, which averages about 16 to 18 gigabytes of VRAM usage. Most of what I've seen in the command prompt window shows that some variance depends on how much CPU RAM I allocate for temp VRAM usage. But overall, the generation times here are about the same. 81 frames generated in two minutes, something around that range of time. I've created a test lab comparison workflow for both models. To test the top one here, I'm locating the Fusion X VASE Q6 GGUF model. So this part is going to use the Fusion X quantized model. Below that, we have another pipeline here that uses the normal WAN 2.1 base 14 bq 5 with other LoRa models because we need the speed of generation. Therefore, I've linked up with a COSVID 14B text-to-video version 2 model here. In this way, we can use it just like the old way of using WAN 2.1 base with COSVID, using the same low sampling steps method here. Both K samplers are using 10 sampling steps. All the sampling settings here are the same, except for the model loader groups where I'm using Fusion X here without needing any additional LoRa models. Because, as explained in the model card, Fusion X already combines these four components together, COSVID and ACK Video, which help us generate with low sampling steps. And there's a reward model, MPS, within this one AI model file. Therefore, I don't need to use another LoRa loader like the one below. If you want to use them individually, you can always load COSVID and also use the ACK Video LoRa loader, which you can find in the WAN Video Comfy Hugging Face repo from KJ, compiled into the ACK Video 14B LoRa models, ready to go. But in my workflow here, it's not for production purposes. This is just a test lab to test both AI models generated outcomes with the same input parameters and settings. Check it out here. First, I tested with this robot sitting on a rocket flying in the sky. Then remove the background to focus only on the robot and the rocket. I created a simple text prompt here for action scenes of the robot sitting on the rocket flying through space. Both generated results were completed before this video was recorded. So take a look at both of them. Here, we have the Fusion X fine-tuned model. And this one is the normal WAN 2.1 VASE model. Let me know which one you prefer. This is again the Fusion X fine-tuned model with WAN VASE and this one is the normal WAN 2.1 VASE. Both are using quantized GGUF models with Q6 and Q5, so very similar quantized sizes. When I downloaded WAN 2.1, it didn't have Q6, so I used the closest quantized size for both generated videos. So far, I see they can create pretty consistent styles with my input image as the reference. But one thing I like about Fusion X is that it can create more dynamic angles, camera angles, for my rocket while it's flying. You see it's able to pan the camera angle from the left to the front, then slowly pan up. It feels more dynamic this way. <clears throat> On the other hand, the normal WAN 2.1 vase, although it can reference the rocket and the robot sitting on top, only projects within one angle. Let's pause this and go full screen to focus frame by frame. It's able to replicate for my reference image. The styles, details of the lights, the rocket jet behind, etc. But you see the whole motion here. It's all using this one single angle of the rocket. That's not really ideal for reference to image. Right now, in this workflow, 
We are using just a basic reference to image input. We're only putting this reference as an image. We don't have any control videos or control masks for camera motions or manipulating those camera scenes. So it's purely testing how good the AI is at generating the video by using reference to image, very similar to image to video. In this way, we're seeing that Fusion X gets more dynamic scenes and is able to treat this as an object for the reference. Because when it goes to different angles, you see it's able to create different camera angles with this object. That means these AI models understand that even though I'm referencing this image, it's not just a static one side of what I'm referencing. From the left side of the image here, it's also able to pan the camera to the other side, using its AI algorithm to generate different angles of this object within the video. It's kind of complex if you want to analyze this more in depth, but that's what it is. And that's why people are looking for dynamic scenes with AI video models. We're chasing better quality rather than just simple motions for an object moving in one direction. So I think Fusion X wins for basic reference to video. Same concept as image to video. Okay, so now I've tried out a few different video generation comparisons. I have this character here that I've used before and generated a few scenes. The left side is Fusion X and the right side is the original WAN 2.1 vase. Both are WAN 2.1 and vase, but the left one has more dynamic camera motions. The person also has more movement, which works well for dramatic scenes. Looking at the other one, the original WAN 2.1 vase, you see it's walking backward. It doesn't follow up with what I had in the text prompts, to look around the house, talk, and then go back to the other room. I'd say Fusion X wins here, Obviously, it's a lot better for character consistency and motion coherence. Creating more dynamic styles, the next scene I generated describes a detective going into a murder case in a house, doing some inspections. During this, it's just a normal talking scene. As you can see, both have the same settings. But when you look at the normal WAN 2.1 model without fine tuning, the character's face looks a little weird. On the other hand, Fusion X looks better. Both are the same talking and the flashlight is, well, it's kind of weird on both. But overall, Fusion X performs better for the scenes here. Then I tried two more video comparisons with animals. The first is a cat trying to jump up. I gave the cat a leather jacket and jeans. The motions are about the same for both generated results. As you can see, the cat tries to jump up clapping its hands and the front paws are moving around. But in the WAN 2-1 without fine-tuning, the proportions or ratios of the cat's body look a little awkward. <laughs> you see, the head is kind of too small for the body. On the other hand, Fusion X looks better for the aspect ratios of the cat. The last one I tried is a buffalo walking on the street in a suburban area. You'll see both have the same motions where the buffalo is walking toward the camera view. Both are very simple motions, since we're using the same prompt on both sides. Here I haven't used vase. Instead, I set the strength to 1. For example, in the previous one I generated for the female character, I used 1. But in these last examples, for the buffalo, I used 0.75. So there's some variation between this and the image. The image was the first frame here. Exactly these frames. In WAN 2.1, without fine-tuning, you see it tried to walk forward to the camera, but the motion was a little struggling here, especially in this part, where the buffalo is walking. Ah, in this part, it's more clear that the AI understands what to do in these motions, generating step-by-step -step image frames. Even the graphics quality for the trees. You can see the side-by-side -side comparison here. Fusion X, after having all those fine-tuned models combined together, the trees and leaves on the ground are clearer than in the one without fine-tuning. So this is the Fusion X comparison with the normal WAN 2.1 vase. You see both are based on WAN 2.1 vase. But if you add something as a fine-tuned model, you're tweaking a little bit of the data set and combining other reward lores together. It makes a big difference in overall video quality. Like in these four generated results, although it's not top quality, it's just for examples to try, especially for human characters. Because we have the MPS reward lore combined, and you see it's obviously a lot better than the normal WAN 2.1 models running alone. So yeah, that's what it is for fine-tuned models performing better. I would suggest yes, you should try Fusion X if you want to improve the quality.
especially focusing on AI videos for human characters or improving some more details for your video scenes. Definitely give it a try. And you know, this is on Hugging Face. It is not some kind of weird website. <clears throat> That's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.